When you're making mac and cheese, if you're overcooking your pasta or using a fancy overcomplicated cheese because you think it'll taste better, you're, you're doing, doing it all wrong. wrong. Mac and cheese. Either you know it from a box or you've tried to make it at home and ended up with a dry, grainy baking dish full of noodles. Here are a few basic tips to ensure that you make cheesy, perfectly cooked mac and cheese every time. The first and one of the biggest mistakes people make is overcooking the pasta. Don't cook your pasta all the way through or even al dente. That hot, cheesy sauce you're gonna mix with it is gonna keep cooking it and turn it into an overdone, mushy, pasty slop. So you need to undercook your pasta. Different sizes and shapes are gonna cook at different times. So look at the directions on the package and you wanna cook it a little less than the time required for al dente. Strain it and rinse it under cold water and this will stop the cooking process. That way, when you mix it with the sauce, it's guaranteed to have a perfect texture. The next step that's pretty easy to mess up is the bechamel sauce. If you overcook the flour and the butter, it's gonna give your whole dish this nasty burnt flavor. And if you use cold milk and whisk it too slowly, it's gonna make your sauce lumpy and sad. What you wanna do is start by heating your milk up to just a simmer. And while that's going on, whisk together equal parts butter and flour over medium high heat. When the flour just starts to turn light brown and smell a little nutty, add the hot milk and whisk it in really quickly so your sauce comes out smooth, velvety, and delicious. And now for the best part the cheese. Pick out cheeses you like that melt really well and make sure to get the most aged version of that cheese that you could find. The more aged the cheese, the more tangy cheese flavor you're gonna get in your mac and cheese. If you wanna experiment with some of those intense cheeses like a feta or a pecorino or a parmesan, we found that it works really well when you mix it with like a neutral subtle cheese like a jack. That way you'll get the strong flavor from those intense cheeses, it'll melt really well and it won't be overwhelming. Now that you have the right pasta, bechamel sauce, and cheese, you want to mix them all together so it's just right. The ratio we like to start with is about two cups of bechamel and two cups of cheese for a half pound of dried pasta. Stir the bechamel and cheese together over medium-low heat till they're smooth. Then add your cooked pasta and stir it all up together until it's evenly mixed and ready to go. And don't forget the salt. Without it, your dish will just taste like pasta and creamy sauce. Salt is absolutely critical in bringing out that cheesy flavor that you're looking for. Now that you have a really great mac and cheese, you want to customize it. You can serve it as it is for a creamy stovetop style, or add some breadcrumbs, maybe a little extra sauce, and bake it for a crispier baked version. At Homeroom, we serve it all sorts of ways, from our trailer mac that has chopped up Nyman Ranch hot dog and topped with potato chips, to our Mexican inspired, which has chorizo, jack cheese, chipotle peppers, and cilantro. So don't be afraid to mix it up. If you've done all these things right, you'll end up with a mac and cheese that's gooey, creamy, cheesy, and super flavorful. And it'll beat the box every time.